At that time, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to your Lord Jesus Christ. In this season of Lent, we do not have the Gloria, not even on Sundays, except on two very special days, which we call not just feasts, but solemnities. That means something greater than just a feast. The first one is in the Feast of St. Joseph, 19th of March. And today, we have the solemnity of the Annunciation to Mary, the Mother of God. Because these are something so wonderful to be celebrated that the Gloria is proclaimed. In the Feast of St. Joseph, the Gospel text from Matthew was really the Annunciation to St. Joseph about this great event. And what we have today in the Gospel according to Luke is the Annunciation to Mary that she will be the Mother of God. Now this solemnity of the Annunciation to Mary you could say is also the announcement of the conception of Jesus. No wonder nine months later, on December 25th, we celebrate the birth of Jesus. So this feast of the Annunciation, the solemnity, unravels, unfolds this wonderful mystery of God becoming human. The people for centuries were waiting for the coming of of this Messiah. And that's why the readings are meant to help us understand what this solemnity is all about. In the reading from Isaiah, the prophecy is made about the birth of the Messiah from the line of the kingship of David and the dynasty. But the kings who came were an utter disappointment and so they kept looking forward to that time when there will be truly Somebody as professed, as prophesied in the book of Isaiah. And now, with the solemnity of the Annunciation, that special graced moment has arrived. Another reason that the church chooses this first reading from Isaiah is about the king, the political king Ahaz, and to contrast his attitude with the attitude of Mary that we will have in the gospel. Now, King Ahaz was the king of Judah, the southern kingdom, and he publicly professed his faith, but privately and politically, he had other plans. And he had political alliances with other kings which are going to be disastrous. And so Isaiah comes to warn him that not you should not go down that path. But King Ahaz, with a pretense of false piety, says, you know, I do not want to disturb God. They say there's no crook worse than a pious crook. And Ahaz, despite his false piety, Isaiah persists 
and challenges him and announces God's word to him. God himself will give you a sign. A maiden shall conceive and give birth to a son. Now, King Ahaz dared to say no to what God was offering him. You could say in the words of a popular poster, I have made up my mind. Don't confuse me with the facts. And therefore, King Ahaz said no. Now contrast this with Mary, whom we heard in the gospel. Mary dared to say yes. And as with any serious decision, Mary arrived at this through due discernment. She asked questions, she probed, she said, how could it be? And finally, she embraced it. Despite her own plans, Mary dared to say yes. But little did she know what that yes was going to mean as her life went on. And we'll see a little bit of it later. Now in the second reading, which is from the letter to the Hebrews, it, what you could say, presents Psalm 39 in the light of Jesus becoming human. And that's why Jesus, you could say, is announcing that word of himself. Here I am, I've come to do your will, O God. So here is Jesus, the second the person of the Trinity becoming human. Here is Mary saying yes to make that event possible. When I was studying in the Holy Land, I had the grace and the privilege to visit Nazareth and to celebrate the Eucharist precisely in the grotto, the cave of the Annunciation. And there prominently was written these words in Latin, Verbum caro factum est hic, which is translated, the word was made flesh here. That's what made it so unique. Because it says so much that this birth of Jesus, which was now being unfolded through the conception, was not a myth, was not a legend. It was history. And you could say a unique moment in the salvation history of that time. Every feast of Mary is really a feast of Jesus. Or as the theologians say, every feast that is Mariological is also Christological. So what can we learn on this solemnity of the Annunciation? First, from Jesus. What makes the event so special and unique is that God takes flesh. God becomes human. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. No longer can we speak about that distant God, remote God, God up in the heavens. No, God came right into our midst to dirty himself in the muck of our human existence. But sometimes the way we treat God, we throw God back into the heavens. No, he's right in our midst, that closeness to us. He's not distant or remote. It's not we who come to approach God. It is God who comes to approach us. He takes the first step. You know, that is the scandal. The scandal of a God who cannot fit into the cosmos now chooses to become human and to walk in our midst. Some people still find that so hard to believe. And that's why it's a scandal of God's love. Our founder, St. Alphonsus, in this wonderful novena in preparation for Christmas, uses a number of phrases every day of the novena. I'd just like to paraphrase some of that to show you what the conception of Jesus unleashed that led to his birth. The all-powerful God chooses to become all-vulnerable by becoming human. The infinite God becomes finite. The unlimited God now becomes limited in the body of Jesus. The God who is larger than the cosmos now fits into the womb of Mary. God chose the womb of Mary as the first tabernacle of God's living presence on earth. No wonder life is so sacred. Because when life is conceived and nurtured in the womb, we cannot but be and respond to the call to be pro-life. Not only at the conception, but right through life, even to the very end, to be pro-life in all its forms. By choosing to become flesh and human, now God has got a human face in Jesus. And because God has entered our reality, our hope and our prayer is that we will reflect the face of God. That we, through our lives, our behavior, our attitudes, will mirror this wonderful face of God to people. 
Now all of this and more happened at the Annunciation when the Word became flesh. God in Jesus knows precisely our struggles, our difficulties, our challenges, our fears, our anxieties, but also our joys. This God walks with us. God holds our hands. God wipes our tears. God challenges us. And in doing so, we realize He never lets go of our hand. God is real in Jesus. So what can we learn from Mary in this solemnity of the Annunciation? Mary said yes, but she did not know where that yes would lead her to. From a small village in Galilee, she was hurled into the world, into, cos into the cosmos, you would say. From being a simple woman, she was transformed by the Holy Spirit into one of grace and wisdom. But life was not going to be easy. And that yes would not just mean greatness and glory, it would also mean struggles to remain faithful. She had to struggle with the gossiping tongues in her village, trying to understand how she became pregnant. Can you imagine the weight and the pain that she had to carry? She had to struggle at the birth of Jesus to face what it meant to be homeless, to be a migrant and a refugee. She had to struggle to see her son when he was 12 years old being lost in the temple. She, would turn, she had to go through the pain of accompanying him on the way of life and the way of the cross, standing at the foot of the cross. Can you imagine the pain of a mother to see her son tortured, humiliated, rendered naked right before her eyes? The pain of what that yes meant to her right through life. But the biggest lesson we can learn from Mary is that no matter what the challenge, no matter what the struggles, God is always with us, is Emmanuel. To have God with us does not mean we will have a problem-free life, we will have a difficulty-free life. What we will have is that God will walk with us, never abandon us. Mary, through her yes, realized that. And when God is with us, we can face the world, the challenges that may come our way. So to conclude, and the Feast of the Annunciation is not just the Feast of Mary and the Archangel Gabriel in dialogue with each other. No, it is God becoming one with us because Jesus, as we heard in the responsorial psalm, said yes. And more than, and in response, Mary said yes too. Secondly, each time we pray the Angelus, we are really celebrating the solemnity. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, so that traditional prayer is really a celebration of the solemnity right through the year. And the third and the most important is at every Eucharist, what I read in Nazareth, the word became flesh here, happens every time we celebrate the Eucharist. Isn't that wonderful? This solemnity casts its beautiful shadow all through the year. Let us live it to know that through Mary's yes, our own yes will be strengthened. And that Jesus becomes flesh here and now. He walks with us in this journey of faith, in our journey of life. We can only say, thanks be to God.